Hi guys, it's Jennifer Miner here sharing today uh, a card I am calling Joyful Ombre. Some of the techniques we'll be using are negative die cuts, digital die cutting, direct to paper inking, custom enamel brads, and a large card base. Um, so this is the card that I'll be sharing with you today. It uses um, my silhouette cameo to cut out the dies and then a direct inking on the background there. So to start, I purchased this Holly set through the Silhouette online store. I uh, really liked the shape, but didn't really care for the way it was laid out. So I kind of ungrouped it and just added a few more um, holly leaves and redistributed them on a five by seven-ish um, rectangle. So here you can see I am just weeding it. And really I should have either cut it twice or um, had my blade a little deeper because I had kind of a tough time. It's a fairly delicate um, die cut. And so this took a little while, but it was totally worth it. And in the end, I didn't rip or tear anything, which is kind of unusual for me. <laughs> so um, I had added a little border around my die and it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. So I just trimmed that off. You can see as I'm working on my weeding. Um, so it'll be just a little bit smaller than I had intended. Uh, but in the end, this was the better choice. And just sometimes stuff doesn't work out the way you plan. So still working on that weeding. And overall, I'm really happy with the way the shape looked once I was finished. And once I got that fully weeded, I started on my background. So I took a sheet of five by seven cardstock and taped it down to my work mat, just using some washi tape I had lying around. This just kind of keeps it in place, makes my life a little easier. Of course, my mat still slides around, but so I'm starting with Worn Lipstick Distress Ink and uh, just using the ink blending tools, I have a, both kind of a combination of rectangular shaped ones as well as circular ones that I'm working with. And just applying that ink down about halfway and trying to keep my application fairly smooth and fairly even. I'm just kind of taking my time with it. And then I'm going to switch over to Festive Berries and focusing mostly at the top of that and working it down into the worn lipstick and just blending um, layer after layer and again trying to really work on keeping it smooth and an even gradual ombre type transition. Okay, so once I've got that kind of about the level of darkness I want, I'm going to go back over with that worn lipstick. I think this is really the key to getting a smooth transition <clears throat> is applying your colors and then going back over and working with blending them. Once you get to kind of a certain level of color, it really starts to flow and um, smooth out a little bit easier than when you're first starting. And as you'll see when I start the green, this is not always so easy and smooth. But again, here working with the worn lipstick and then the festive berries. Switch back over again, just working between those two shades. And now I'm going to start on the green portion of my ombre. And I'm starting here with um, Evergreen Bow. And this does not get applied the way I kind of had hoped. The color is really uh, concentrated and blotchy. So it really just took a lot of time of blending, 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 blending. Um, I'm going to work also with Lucky Clover and then I'll add a little bit of Cracked Pistachio over that really just to blend that kind of blotchiness that came out in the Evergreen Bow. One way I could have um, at least slightly avoided this was by tapping off my ink on a piece of scratch paper to begin with. Um, but I didn't realize it was kind of going to do this and most of my colors don't do that. It's nothing's wrong with it. It just, that's just kind of how it turned out there. So I'll let you just kind of watch that um, color application again. That's Evergreen Boughs, Lucky Clover, and then a little bit of Cracked Pistachio.
Okay, back again. So you can kind of see how just continuing to work with it, getting at um, like that saturation level helps smooth it out. Um, if I were going to do this as kind of a solid background and not putting the overlay over it, I might have actually done this again. But because only a small portion of this is going to show through, even though it's a little bit blotchy, it's not bad and it's certainly less noticeable um, with the overlay. And just again switching back and forth and back and forth through these colors and kind of going over. Um, like I said, I'm not super thrilled with it, um, but for this application it's okay and I'll just have to try and remember that Evergreen Bows it, um, kind of acts a little different than I was expecting. And then at this point I'm going to grab a little bit of sponge sugar and just go over my pinkish red shade and then really work that into where that transition line is between the two shades. And now I'm just pulling back the washi tape. And then I'm going to go ahead and place my overlay, uh, my background over this ombre application. And for this I am just using my Scotch quick dry adhesive and I'm just kind of putting a whole bunch of little dots all over the place. I'm trying to be very careful to get close enough to the open spaces that it gets adhered but not too close and not too much glue so that it kind of um, slides through and since the Distress Ink is a um, reactive, a water reactive, sometimes the water in the adhesive can kind of make it react. And then for those middle pieces of the holly, I'm just using a two-way glue pen to kind of give those a little bit of extra adhesive on there just to make sure that whole thing is down. And then I'm just trimming off my excess using my Fiskars desktop trimmer. You do have a really large um, guillotine paper cutter that I absolutely love, but for this I um, can get my face fairly close to it and be a little more accurate with the cuts. Plus then you can watch it. So now I've got my um, sentiment here cut out with an oval. Again, this is the um, Silhouette font LD Demure. And I've just cut a small strip of white cardstock, just large enough to show behind my sentiment. So I've just used the boss gloss, and you can certainly use Versamark, which is normally what I'd use, but I just happen to have that close at hand. Um, putting that on my little strip and applying this Enchanted Gold Embossing Powder. And I'm doing two coats of it here, heat setting that with my heat gun. You can just that, kind of see that change. Um, what doesn't show up on camera is this has a really nice um, iridescence to it. So again, just going to uh, adhere that behind my oval and using that quick dry adhesive. This stuff works great on paper, doesn't warp or bubble. Just placing that down. I did have to trim a tiny bit off from where it was a little inaccurate placing it. And then I um, am now going to put those little middle pieces back in, so the center of the O and the center of the loops on the F and the L. Just going to use my tweezers and a little bit of adhesive to place those down where they came out. And I'm using um, adhesive, I think I mentioned this on a previous video, just because I feel like the uh, liquid glue versus kind of like a tape really gets into that um, either glitter finish or in this case we've got an, a glitter embossing powder. But again, I will use a little acrylic block right there on top of it just to kind of hold everything in place while it dries. And then I had also cut a slightly larger oval and I'm just directly inking that with um, my festive berries and this will serve as just a little mat around my joyful sentiment. You guys know this is one of my favorite techniques and so everything matches. And then I'm going to add just this uh, green grow, gray, grow grain ribbon that has a little um, red trim down each side. This was kind of somebody's extra supply that they gave to me and I'm glad that I had it for this project. And now I'm going to go ahead and move into creating two background mats. This first one is a full five by seven. This is going to be my bottom mat. 
and I am just inking that again um, with my ink blending tool and this distressed ink and this time I am using uh, Lucky Clover and just again just around the edge because this is only that's the only piece of this that's going to be shown is just that tiny bit of edging. And just getting a really good application and cover on that. And then I'm creating a second mat. And for this one, I'm going to use uh, that gold embossing powder. Here again, just kind of dabbing down my um, boss gloss. Kind of adhesive here. And then I'm going to apply the gold embossing powder. This is fantastic, very sparkly, very shiny. And then just heat set it with my heat gun. And just like that green mat, you can see I'm not doing the full piece of paper, just kind of the edges that'll show. You want a little bit that's going to go under your mat just so you have like a full, so you don't have any little spots or holes in it. And as I mentioned in my blog, this would be the time when I got um, glitter embossing powder all over everywhere. I got glitter all over my whole, all my clothes and in my hair from this project today. It just kind of went everywhere. But just redid one of the edges there. And now that mat's completed, so I'm going to assemble the background of my card. And I'm just going to use my ATG gun and tape down my holly background onto the gold glitter mat and then the gold glitter mat onto my green mat. Now at this point, um, this is what I'm calling a custom enamel brad. So what I do is take, um, in this case I'm using a gold brad, I'm going to just dip it into the boss gloss and then take that brad and dip it into my embossing powder and then heat set that with my heat gun. This time I did three applications of it and as long as it's still warm, you don't have to reapply the boss gloss. You can just go straight back into the embossing powder because it kind of retains heat differently than paper does. So what this gives you is a custom matching kind of enameled brad that perfectly matches your embossing powder. These are not always super durable, so if you're going to mail this, you might want to think about it, but I love how now my brad perfectly matches my sentiment. Really easy. If you do this technique, make sure that you are using um, tweezers or some other kind of tool and be very, very careful because everything gets very hot very quickly. And now I'm going to adhere my sentiment oval using Tombow uh, foam tape right over that green ribbon. 